for this. Hi guys. Hi. Welcome to Craig Maddy Muir again this glorious day. Yeah, we've got much better weather for this tour. It's the sun's out, there's no wind, it's, it's beautiful. So can everybody hear us? Is there people watching? Just wait and see. Yeah. We're still, I think we're still a few minutes early. Yeah, we're three minutes to one. One person, three people. Oh, there we go, got people coming on now. Yeah. We're in luck, guys. We've got a live birth. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully. I'm just standing over at you just now having twins. She's had her first lamb. We'll just have a check in a minute to see if she's going to have a second lamb. So it's a beautiful day here today at Craig Maddy, just north of Glasgow. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. That's my cousin Bill on. <laughs> Stephen from Fife. Hi, Gordon and Susie from Go Rural. Hi, Leslie. Edinburgh. I think the whole of Scotland's sunny today. We're well through lambing. Yeah, so the, 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 on the last tour we were just kind of, we we're just at the start of it, but things have well, I was going to say things have quietened down. We don't seem to be working any less, but we've got a lot less use in the sheds now, so that has to be a good sign. The bags <laughs> under my eyes are growing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll just wait till one o'clock. We've just got a few minutes. Hello, Eleanor from Brecon, Tennessee, Hi, USA. Well done. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks for joining us. People from Thornhill. So I've got two ewes having twins at the moment. They've both had one lamb each. So we'll just check one of them in a minute and we'll show you the rest of the sheep that are in here. We're nearly at the end of the lambing. So we'll just show you around in just a minute or two. We'll let more people join. There's Winnie from Gate House of Fleet. And then we'll take you down and show you some of our lambs outside. If we've got time, we'll take you down and show you the lambs that are outside. Um, which will be about a week or two old now. So, Sandra from Lincolnshire. Hi, Sandra. Claudia from Bavaria. Good to see you, Claudia. That's fantastic. So I'll just turn the camera around. We must be almost at one, I think. Yeah, just almost there. We could show you this lamb, couldn't we? The one yeah. she's already had. So okay. here we have. Oh. Another you trying to jump over it. That lamb there is about 20 minutes old. And there is the mother there. Just going to have another lamb in a minute or two. I'm just going to check it. Yeah, there it is. Nice and healthy. With its yeah. up. There's another one over here. It's just born at exactly the same time. We've penned it up. Yeah, there we have one here. It's, that's a Texel U. She is very calm. They've been inside for a week or two, so they've got used to us. It's amazing at lambing time. During the year, they're just they run as a flock, and you don't get to know the sheep individually. But at lambing time, you pen them up, and you see them every day, well, all the time, and you actually get to know quite a few of them. And they're different characters, and some of them are quite wild, and some of, some of them are really very calm. This is a tech, so she's really very calm. So that's her first lamb. I think that's us one now. Yeah, that's one o'clock. We'll take you over. Do you have to hold the camera, Susie? Okay, for those of you who've just joined us, welcome to Craig Maddy Muir Farm. I'm Susie and Gordon is over here lambing a ewe as we speak. She's had her first lamb. There it is there, about 20 minutes ago. I think she's having two laps. <laughs> uh, we're, yes, we're hoping she, she should be, she's in the... the, the um, pen for twins, for the ewes having twins, so she should be. She has been scanned for two, but you know, it doesn't, it's not always accurate. Let's go back over to the other side here. The girls on this side are all, all having twins as well. Some of them have had both already. But this one, she's only had one. 
There we go. We'll see if she's ready to have her second one. Yeah, it it's coming. Fantastic. It's quite tricky just trying to keep them calm. Feet. Let's have a look, see if we can see these feet. There we go, look at that. One front leg out already. A perfectly presented lamb. Two feet, and you can, see, can you see the wee black nose there? Nose and the tongue. Nose and the tongue. This is exactly what you want. This is hopefully a nice straightforward lambing <laughs> here. Shouldn't say it, should you? Just don't speak too soon. There, there we go. Looks like it's going to be a good size. That's a good lamb. Let's we'll see, let me go down a wee bit lower here. Yeah. It's quite hard to show you. Hold on, I'll just move over here. Look at this good mummy cleaning her lamb. Hear her talking to it. She talks to it immediately it's born. That's her bonding with it. See if you can see if you can hear her a second. She says, a... um, you're a bit too close there. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. She's going to clean it all up, get all the mucus off it and dry it out so it'll get warmed up. So before you know it, it'll look, actually look very white, born oh, very yellow. Already but be... it's bleating. It's amazing. It's barely a minute old and it's bleating. Oh, the lo lovely wee noises she makes to her lamb. The wonders of nature. It, well, that's Stephen has just come on and said, incredible how right you are. It really is incredible. We're very privileged to be doing what we're doing. It's a wonderful time of year. It's very rewarding. The whole family gets involved. Usually, unfortunately, our children have gone away for the day. Grannies and grandpa have taken they've been, their children They've been away. drafted in to help. Um, but it's a very rewarding time. The ch our children, are, we've got three boys. One's 11, uh, the, other, the middle one's nine, and even our youngest, who's only five, even he helps. He fills up buckets and... It's a very yeah, rewarding time They just love it. The bar boys time, love yeah. it. There's Le Leslie Wood saying she's so calm. She is. She's very calm. She's, a, she's showing signs of being a good mother already. Good. Even though we're standing right next to her, she's still doing her, her best. Good management, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> so in here... Can we show them the rest of the... Let's see what else is going on here. We were trying to pre-plan this tour and then we thought, actually... It never goes according to plan anyway, because you don't really know what's going to happen with the animals, so I thought we'll just fly by the seat of our pants and take it as it comes. Yeah. So, well, um, these sheep in here, these guys there, they're all, they've all still to lamb. They should all lamb in the next day or two. They're all having two. And this, this shed used to be absolutely... This was packed. Packed with sheep. Now it's pretty empty. Over, over the barrier here, let's let these guys move out of the way. Over the barrier here, we've got a few having triplets. In fact, there's a pair that were born this morning. In fact, she, had, she, she had triplets this morning. I actually took one away from her to give to another you. And see how, you see how clean and white they are. It's very, they're very, the ewes are very good at cleaning them up quickly. So these guys are all having three. There only is one, two, four left to lamb. And this triplet pen, we've got another triplet pen in another shed, and there's about another four over there. And these guys are having, uh, these guys, as I said, are having twins. We've still got a few outside to lamb, and I'm actually, we would normally bring them in, but we are, I'm thinking the weather's so good now, we might actually just leave them out. It, it couldn't be better, actually, for lambing the weather just right now. It's fantastic. It's warmed up a bit. Hopefully the grass is starting to grow as well. The grass is starting to grow. So, um, so once they've lambed in this, shed, in this pen, we've, Pen them up like we have here. There's that one getting to its feet already. Look at that. She's done so well. There's a wee lamb jumping about. That lamb there was born last night or due, uh, yesterday evening. So we pen them up just for 24 hours and um, with their mothers. In these individual pens, Why? we pen them up just so they get bonded, and then once they've spent 24 hours, and we check them and make sure they've all had a souk of their mother's milk. Their first milk is colostrum, which is very, very important for them because it passes the antibodies for uh, to protect them from any infection. To, um, passes the, the antibodies from the ewe onto the lamb, so it's very, very, very important they get a drink of milk in the first hour or so of life. 
And then once they've been in here in these individual pens for 24 hours, we put them into a pen over here, which we call the mothering up pen. Because when they're in the little pens, they don't learn to follow their mothers. They, they, they find it very difficult to follow their mothers. They, we've got to teach them to look for their mothers. So we put them in this pen, and they're it's in here. It's a lovely calm place the, for them to just get used to each other. They're in here for 24 hours before they go outside. So these guys in here are actually going outside this afternoon. This one, they're enjoying the sun. He's sun enjoying the sun, in. yeah. Look at that, it's beautiful. <laughs> Hear them learning to, looking for each other. That's her, that's that one's mother there. Oh, the, that. oh the lambs each with their unique wee ba, wee cry. And each ewe's got an individual number and every lamb has a corresponding number. So that one, two, two there, there's two lambs in here with one, two, two, there's one, two, three. That is just so that we can go out to the field and uh, check on them and we find a lamb one, two, two away from its mother, we can pair them up just by picking it up and looking for her. So we find that's, that's why you see sheep all numbered at this time of year. And the sheep also have all got individual numbers in their ears. You can see they've all got tags. They've got two tags, one on the left and one on the right. And the tags are exactly the same. One's got a microchip in it. And we can have a, we've got a tag reader that uh, we can store information about every individual sheep. And if, if that you loses one tag, we can then go out and buy the same tag to re-tag it. By law, they've actually got to have two tags in every ear. So. These guys here are all triplets that have been born, I think. Yeah, she had three. One. We, normally, we don't normally leave the ewes with triplets. We lift, normally lift a triplet because with having two teats, they find it very difficult to raise three lambs, and our ground isn't good enough for uh, to grow enough grass for them to um, have enough milk for three lambs. So we usually ra lift the third lamb, and uh, we've got a lot of pet lambs. We've got a huge number of pet lambs this year, actually. I think we're about 25 at the moment and growing. Which is far from ideal. Far from ideal. There we go. So a great deal of our time is spent, during the day is spent checking all these pens, checking to see if they need new dry bedding, if they need any straw added to their beds, checking that they've always got water um, and a pile of silage to eat. And they also get hard feed as well, they get uh, cereal as well, which they have to be fed twice a day. So it all takes a, a lot of time. And you see that lamb's got a wee brown tummy. That's iodine. We treat it, we spray iodine on its navel just when it's born to protect any infection entering it uh, through its navel. So we give it a wee spray and we always try and spray it again a few hours later because the ewe quite often licks the iodine off. So. so I think we'll go out and show you the dogs. We'll just have an hour look. See these wee lambs are all right. Yeah. That's, that's them up on their feet. Look at that. Stephen's asking, how did we learn to farm? That's a, that's a good question, That's actually. a good question, we're, we're, Stephen. We're actually going to go on to that subject. We'll just tell you about it now. I am a... I start... I'm actually a first generation farmer. Um, I grew, I, I lived here when I was a child from where, where we are now. And we've got a piece of hill ground out the back there. We've got about 250 acres out there, which my family owned, but we weren't farmers. And uh, I got two calves and 10 sheep when I was 16. And now we've got 380 breeding ewes and a flock of 30 purebred Aberdeen Angus cows. So I went to agricultural college and learnt it that way and uh, the farm has just gradually built up and I bought more land and um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's been great, great learning curve. I'm not from farming stock either, um, but I have always been, I've always had my own horses so I'm used to 
looking after animals, having to get up really early in the morning, having to lug heavy bags, of, uh, heavy buckets of feeding around. So, and just ge just generally being very outdoorsy. So, Gordon's landed on his feet. I've, I've picked <laughs> I've, well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love it. I, I love being involved in the farm. So it's uh, yeah. But I'd be lost without Susie it's now, not, believe it's not me. A chore. It's not a chore for me to be here. I just love being around animals in general. So we both I've been do. I've been learning the ropes over the last few years. In the early, we, we've got three children who are 11, 9 and 5. So in the sort of early days when they were babies and toddlers, I wasn't as involved in the farm because I was just too, too busy and too tied to being at home. But over the last two or three years, I've been more involved, in, well, heavily involved in the lambing. So, yeah, I love it. Um... Judy is asking what breed of sheep we have. So these sheep there are mules. So these are a cross out of a Scottish blackface. We, we have a, a flock of about 100 Scottish blackface ewes and they're very hardy hill sheep which are suited to the, the, the moor out behind us. And then we cross them with a blue face Leicester and that is, this is the progeny. This is the mule, the Scotch mule. And then we cross them with a Texel, and that is a Texel U there. We cross them with a male version of that. And um, that gives us these lambs, which is a Texel out of a mule U. And these lambs, these ewes, mule ewes, are very prolific. They, we scanned our mules, we've got about 280 mules, and we scanned them at 210%. So that's 2.1 lamb per U. That, and out of them we had 70 sets of triplets, that's why we've got so much, a lot of pet lambs. We are actually managing to adopt quite a few off onto different ewes, twin them onto ewes having singles, so we're not having as many as we hope for, but yeah, as we want. Right. So things are nice and calm things now. Things are things calm are, in we here. We could probably leave them, we have to keep checking them. We check them all the time, during the night, although last night I didn't get up, last night's the first night I didn't get up during the night, because the pen the sheep, sheep numbers have gone down. Do you want to go and let the dogs out, Sue? Just let the dogs out. Bring them over okay. to the bike. We'll just uh, let the dogs out and show you the dogs. We I can't... One, one crazy dog, so... Yeah, we've, well, we've got three crazy dogs. We've got, um, we've got three dogs. We can't do our work without our dogs. We've got Jess, Sky, and Sally. I'll just turn the camera back to myself. I, uh, I've trained all my dogs myself. Sky is 11 and Jess, I think, is four. And we've got Sally, who's one. You can maybe hear them barking with excitement coming out. And I couldn't do my job without them. Sally is only one. I've just started to train her. We'll just put them on. Yeah, on the bike. Tongue has gone there. There's Jess. That's Jess. She's my main, main dog at the moment. Jess, Sky, Sky, that will do. Sally, that will do. Sally. This, this is Sally. She's. Oh. Oh, she's <laughs> there we go. Sally's a bit Hold excited. On. Let me calm her down. The only way to calm her down is to rub her chest. There well, we go. That's Sally. She is going to start working very soon. She should have started, but uh, Sky, that will do. Sky, Sky, that will do. Sky's away off. Sky, that will do. Sky, Sky. Never worked with pets. Sky. Sky. The Here, Sky, she's 11. Sky got on the bike. On the bike. Got on the bike. So she gets on the bike as well. So there we go. I don't know if I could get all three in the bike. That might be a don't challenge. Don't wish to attempt that today. Sally, that will do. Sally. Sally on the bike. Oh, there we go. Three of them oh, on the oh. bike. Not for long though. <laughs> there we go. Our three wonderful dogs. Most of the time. Yeah. So, Sally says there's no room for me. So, as I said, I can't really do my job without them. They're invaluable to me. And I train them all myself um, to some very varying degrees of success, I have to say. And you also started doing some um, field trial competitions, didn't you? Yeah, my sheepdog. I, I ran Jess at a, a sheepdog uh, trial a couple of times. The first the first kind of novice one I ran at, I did quite well. And the second one uh, was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the world to swallow me up. It was one of these moments. Right. But, uh, obviously, with the, the virus, the, the uh, training and the competitions have been running, so hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll be back on hopefully soon. Hopefully they'll be you back, back on again. get back to it and get Sally trained up yeah. as well. Yeah, so, well, I'll take... Well, let's put Jess in the pickup and we'll take her, take her to the ship. Jess, that'll do. Jess, Jess, get in the car. 
the other two away. So we're just going to take you. We're going to take you down to one of our fields. So we're just going to a short drive. Go to bed. Go on. Sorry, I'm talking to my dog. Susie, call Sky. So Sky is away. We're going to take you and show you um, some of our sheep in the field. Which I'm just waiting for Susie to come back. And we'll see the views that we've got here at Craig Maddy. They're stunning views. Um, we can see the whole central belt of Scotland from the Pentland Hills right round to um, Arran in the west and the Clyde. I'll just. How are we doing for time? Right. 17 minutes past one. So we'll go down and see some of our older lambs. Here we go. The grass hasn't been growing very well as, as of late because it's been so cold. But um, we try and use as little artificial fertiliser as possible on our farm. And there's a local, local biodigester on the other side of Mogai, which is a local town that we're on. And um, here we go, that's better. You don't have to look at us now. So we get the byproduct from the biodigester put on our land, which makes the grass grow. So we're trying, we, we do put a wee bit of artificial fertilizer, but we're, it's a great way of returning nutrients to our land. So we'll have a look at the view just here. I'll just get out, it's a wee bit hazy. So that's looking, that's looking east, it's a wee bit hazy, that's looking east, you can't see it today, I don't know if you guys can, that's the Pent the Pentland Hills are through there in the east, and scanning right round, that's us starting to get to Glasgow now, that's the east end, looking over towards Hamilton, that's Glasgow there, that's the west end, right round, that's now round to Mogai, Bearsden, so we've got a huge, huge view. So it's quite a unique location, really. I mean, we can be in the centre of Glasgow in about 25 minutes, and yet we're in the most beautiful countryside. You know, it's really, we've really got the best of both worlds. Yeah. So these ewes in front of us here, these are our ewes are still to have twins. Um, and I'm, as I said earlier, I think I'll just leave, I might just be leaving them. And below them are the ewes that are having singles. They're still to have singles. There's Karen giving us all the way from Canvas Lang. I think Hi, Karen. Can that's Canvas Lang over there. Back. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, these ewes in front of us are having two, and the ones below them in the distance, they're having singles. And then once once I see them finishing, we um, we will bring them up and sort them out and take them off to their their grazing for the summer. So we'll jump back in the car and. Uh, take you for a wee drive, just for two minutes, two minute drive to some of our fields. Being a first generation farmer, I, I, our farm unfortunately isn't ring fenced, I've bought pockets of land in the area so um, I've got to kind of work with what I've got so I'm not fortunate enough that I can move all my sheep around the farm without a trailer. I've got to move them from fields to fields with trailers. I've, over the years I've bought, oh, in, well, in the last 10 years I've maybe bought just over 100 acres, 120 acres in the last 10 years. So we'll just take you, there's, there's ewes, and lambs, ewes and lambs in here on the left. Do we see? Being a bit yeah, fast, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Too fast to see anything. <laughs> Concentrate on the road. I'll just backseat drive while we're live. <laughs> That's us now onto the main A81, which runs out to Loch Lomond. Let me show the roundhouse. We've on the farm. We've opened the roundhouse accommodate holiday accommodation. It's called Craig Maddy Muir Roundhouse. It was a unique, it's a unique building and it's got this amazing view that you saw from our own driveway there. It was just up behind us, we should have stopped and shown you it. But. We might be able to show you on the way back if time allows. Stephen's asking, are other farmers generally willing to share information and practices with newer farmers? Yes, there, there has been a shift 
there has been a shift to that um, uh, benchmarking it's called you can share information and uh, you share information with each other and how each other do different practices and um, it's been it, it does help because you gain ideas from more experienced farmers do you want to open the gate soon so this is a field just outside Mogai now and in here we've got ewes and lambs which are hopefully thriving So that's where we stay up there on the hill, and our roundhouse is up beyond that. We're in a we're in a group called Go Rural. That's the Facebook page that we're on is the Go Rural Scotland Facebook page, and uh, Go Rural is a, is a collection, a group of farmers, and we've all got farm diversification projects. We've got um, we've got accommodation, but other farmers have got farm shops, some do farm tours, we're all unique in what we what we do but um, yeah there's a real mixture a real mixture and in the last year this group has been very invaluable to us uh, with support they're a fantastic support group and they're actually running just show you they're actually running a competition this week in Go Rural for a farm tour at Newton Farm in Angus for a family of four so go to Go Rural Dot com. It's a lovely new website that's just gone live this week and you can enter that competition to win a farm tour at Newton Farm in Angus. So here we have some lambs here. There's number 11, they'll be about 10 days old. Let's have a look. So so this is the, the ultimate aim, once we've, we've lambed them, we've had them in the sheds, looked after them in the build up to lambing, hopefully had a successful healthy lamb and then they're brought out, Gordon brings them out the trailer and turns them out here and the sun is shining and hopefully some more grass will come in. Yeah. And the... Yep, the grass will grow, will st really start to grow now, it's really warm, well, in west coast of Scotland terms it's really it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it's so warm over here. Oh, it's very hard to get focused actually. Over here, the sheep are in the shade. Yeah, look at that. They're actually shading from the sun. Hold on, we can't be late. Don't you stop on it? It's very hard to hard to show things when we're moving. Hold on, I'll get out of the car and give you a better view. So look at them all in the trees, shading from the sun. It's fantastic lambing weather now, it really is fantastic. These lambs will be gaining weight every day. That's just lovely, isn't it? Hi from Western Australia. It's, Hi. That's a... This is probably quite wintry weather for you guys. We'll yeah, too cold for you Australians, but just lovely for us. Healthy. There's a nice ewe with her pair of lambs there, number 65. That's a Texo ewe. They'll be about a week old, these lambs. Look at them sunbathing in the sun. Great lambing weather for them, really is tremendous weather. Just, it'll be great to see this grass growing. Number 73. Should we go for a drive up? Mm -hmm. We'll just jump in the car and we'll go, go, go around the, over the top. So as I said, we try and use as little artificial fertiliser in here as we can, and uh, so the the farm is really uh, 
it's really sufficient on organic manure. We're not we're not an organic farm as such, but we try and use as little um, man-made fertilizer as possible. So these lambs, when uh, have a very low carbon footprint compared to the feedlots, as, as we see in the news, there's a uh, the, the, our livestock has got very low carbon footprint here in Scotland. Let's see if there's any sheep up over the top here. You can see one in the distance there with our lambs. What an amazing day. Beautiful I day. think we should just stop farming today and just have a, have a picnic. <laughs> we're child free, we're child yeah. free, we've got nobody in the roundhouse which has got a lovely hot tub so uh, Susie and I might actually take ourselves off for a hot tub and a glass of wine later on. <laughs> if she plays promises, her promises, I'm just thinking. <laughs> Unless there's anything lambing. <laughs> yeah. Fish case, Susie will lamb it and I'll stay in the hot tub. <laughs> up here. There's a couple of nice views and lambs there. There we go. So there is our, I don't know if I can see it. I don't know if you'll see it from here. Up there on the hill behind us, yeah, there. Yeah, it's very hard to see. It's where we stay, and that's where, in the trees behind that white house, is where the roundhouse is. It sits up on the hill there, in a woodland. We'll try and, what time are we at now? We're just about out of time. Do you want to drive we'll back? Try, we'll, try we'll, drive drive, back. we'll drive back and we'll try and give you a view of the roundhouse from a different angle. We've obviously, we've done some of these tours before and we've been in the round, inside the roundhouse, but it's quite nice to see, actually exactly where it sits in the trees you don't questions? get a feel of that any questions oh here we go um judy has asked do the pet lambs cry much oh we're getting with the bumps here can't read this do the pet lambs cry much for their mums when you first separate them no they cry more for their milk to be honest they cry more for usually their milk. they're crying yeah because because they're hungry and in most cases they've been a wee bit unsettled anyway because they're not getting enough they're not getting enough milk from their mothers, so they're generally, sometimes they're actually, start their health has, start, has started to go downhill. So and usually if we get them fed with milk very quickly, they do settle and they're never, they're never on their own in a pen. They're, they've always got company, so they tend to have their milk and they snuggle up against each other. And there's also a heat lamp to give them warmth and comfort, so that helps too. Really, we would rather not have any pet lambs, though that's, it's far from ideal. They're not very economic, unfortunately, but it's just part of it. They're, they're very time consuming to look after. To see if there's some views here. Right, Susie, I'll just get this gate. Not really giving you much of a view of things here. Yeah, it was quite difficult. Well, I'll take a quick run up to where we stay. Any other. Do, Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Hi Melanie. Great. Thank you very much for joining us. So in front of us is uh, more of our another field full of sheep of ours. There they are there. Um, Karen's asking how do you know we get if the lambs get colostrum? We can actually feel them, we're experienced enough that we can actually feel their tummy and if their tummy feels empty you know that they've not had any and actually with the triplets we routinely go around the triplets and give them artificial colostrum, we can actually, can actually buy colostrum in powdered form which we do and we routinely go around the twins, we don't do it with the twins but with the triplets we do do that so we're assured that every lamb gets Colostrum. These are more of our. Let's say them there. Right, we'll take, we'll take a quick run up to our roundhouse. Show you the views. There we go. We're 
ideally located, our holiday accommodation is ideally located because we're, as Susie said, we're only 10 miles from Glasgow and uh, we're only about half an hour from Loch Lomond and 40 minutes from Stirling. So we really are in a central location and uh, for anybody to come and stay. We're also, we're also situated very close to the start of the West Highland Way so if you wanted to come and stay here you could even do a section of the West Highland Way just to, just to experience that. The, st the, the, the scenery in the area is absolutely stunning. And there's, there's lots of stuff you can do around here actually. There's horse riding about a mile away. It's great for mountain biking, walking, hill walking. Lots, there's lot, there are lots of golf courses as well. In the Go Rural um, Lamming, Lamathon, this is part of, we, um, we've, it's amazing to see if all the other farmers' houses, uh, farms where they stay, and we're all very lucky to live in stunning areas of Scotland. We'd have to get the car actually. Just going yep. to show you our roundhouse accommodation. Just up in the trees there. It's actually lovely because it blends into the trees and you would hardly notice there. Most people don't notice it when they drive past. I'm not sure if you can get a good view of that. But there we are, it just sits in there. Nestled in its own little silver birch woodland. I'll just get back in the car. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, hold on, let me get this. I need to get this the hang of this um, putting my seatbelt back on on live tours. <laughs> there we go, no beeping now. Just Melanie saying, Melanie Jacob saying that's great, you can buy powdered colostrum for the pet lambs. Yeah. Just go back up the track here. So we're just going along to the roundhouse accommodation here. Just so we can show, it'd be nice to show you the view on a nice sunny calm day because the last couple of times have been really grey and windy so we'll just do that and then we'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Quite hard to keep this still around the car. There we go. It's just it's gonna be quite hard for you to see it from moving so much. There it is. Let me take it. Right, here we are. We're super lucky with what we've done here. Building this beautiful accommodation. As you see. In a minute, the views from it are stunning. That's down to the reservoir, that's Glasgow's water supply. I won't bore you with the story of that, but um, <laughs> let's, just, sure? let's just say it's <laughs> piped a long way, all the way down to here. The Victorians built it and it's a feat of engineering. <laughs> so there we are, that's our roundhouse accommodation. Lovely sedum roof which changes colour throughout the year. The hot tub which Susie and I are going to get into later as we're child free. Hopefully. <laughs> there we are they are. Look at the view. That, these just are the, these are the fields view. where we've just been down in the distance with the reservoir. Look at that view. The birds are singing, it's gorgeous. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And but we were talking about things that you can do in the area. In actual fact, if you just want to come here and relax and not be too energetic, you can just walk straight out the door here and go for a wee stroll, just yeah. straight through the woodland at the back. Out the back here. And onto the moor. Out there, and then out the back, we've got a beautiful, beautiful moor that you can walk over. There's the solar panels for the building. Have a look at our website, it's www.craigmaddymuir.co.uk So, thank you again to Go Rural for letting us be part of the Lamathon Live this year. Yes, thanks for having us. And uh, tomorrow, we uh, our Lamathon comes from 
Boutique Farm Bothies up in Aberdeenshire. So that's tomorrow at one o'clock. So hopefully you can join them there. Thanks very okay, much for thanks watching. Thanks very much for joining us. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.